You will be making mistakes in your exams this year, and that is completely understandable. You're under a time pressure, it's quite a stressful environment, and therefore sometimes you might misread a question or just make a silly mistake. In this video, I'm going to go through some of the common mistakes that students have made year after year, and that means hopefully you can avoid as many of these as possible. Now there's a really useful guide that you can download completely for free. It's actually produced by AQA and it's aimed at GCSE Science. However, the information is going to be relevant for anybody doing any exam board and even at A-level as well. So it's this document here uh, from AQA. It's called Exploring Common Misunderstandings in GCSE Science. But this is not the document. I think if I showed you the real one, there'd be some copyright infringements and my YouTube channel would get banned. So this is actually just basically a load of blank pieces of paper. But if you do want to get the real document, you can download it and maybe just have a quick read through it in about five or 10 minutes. And what's really good is it gives an example of a student's work. It then gives some top tips, which have been written by examiners and people who've been marking papers. And there's then this explanation about saying why that's something that you should be avoiding. Now, of course, everybody will make silly mistakes here and there, but there are definitely some things that students do year after year after year that you need to be avoiding. Now, the first example in the booklet is just talking about ticking boxes. And the question might say something like tick two boxes. Every year, thousands of students just like you will be maybe misreading the question and they'll only tick one box. And that means they're missing out on an easy mark that they could have guessed. Or maybe they're ticking three boxes and therefore that third box ticking tick basically negates the second mark that you could have got. So, first of all, if you're going to go into any exam, make sure that you're very clear and confident about the different types of questions which could be asked. If that's how to tick a box, if it's connecting up different boxes with lines, or maybe even using the word, which is given um, maybe in a box where it says complete the sentence using one of the words below, make sure you use one of the words below to complete that sentence. All basic stuff. The next thing is about repeating information in your answer. Often, even though there might be a few lines for you to actually complete your answer, students tend to run out of space. And often it's because they don't get to actually answering the question which has been asked. Instead, they repeat the information which has already been given in that question and they write it out again. Now that means that you're gonna end up maybe running out of time as you go through the whole exam. And often, when I've been marking tests in school, the students who tend to get full marks actually write less because they get straight to the point, and that means they spend more time on the more difficult, challenging questions. The next thing is about looking at language and spelling. Now, you do not need to have perfect spelling throughout, but you do need to make sure that you spell the key scientific terms correctly. And also, when you go into that science exam, you need to think a bit like a science and use the kind of scientific vocabulary you'll have learnt in the course. So do not say the word amount. The word amount has been banned. Instead, and I'm sure your teachers have said this, use things like mass or volume. Be very, very precise in the language that you're using. The next thing is to make sure that you read the question. Such a simple piece of advice, but many students, and I suppose myself as well, I will rush through thinking, I know what it's asking me, I'll spend a bit of time doing the answer, but I don't actually answer the question. Now to help you read the question, you can underline things, you can highlight things, and that means that you don't miss any key bits of information that come up in the question, if that's um, the command word potentially, if it's some of the data that you're going to use for a calculation, underline it, and that means that you slow down the process, you have a good think about the question that's being asked, and that means you're much more likely to get the marks which are available. The next thing is explain questions. So often the word explain is gonna be the command word, and this means that you don't just need to write a description of what happened, but you need to explain why that happened and how that's linked to some of the science that you've been learning. And something which I found really useful in the advice here was it said about using certain words. So if there's an explain question, maybe thinking about using the word because, due to, since, this means that. These phrases can link the different sections together, and that means you actually don't just describe what's happening, but you explain why that's happening using some of the science. The next type of question that students do really bad with is evaluate. Now this again doesn't mean that you just write down a description of what you can see or what's happened, but you need to have your judgment or your opinion. And therefore a phrase like, I think that, could be really useful as you structure that answer. So my tip there would be if you see a question where it says evaluate, 
Just write down the word better, maybe near the question, and then use that word better in your answer. I think X is better than Y because, and then you can obviously then use the data that you've been given in that question. In the guide, there's then a section about questions in an unfamiliar context, and they will ask these every year. And every year, students will start panicking, thinking we've never been taught this. Yes, you might not have been taught about that specific scenario or that example, but the underlying science, maybe the physics, the biology or the chemistry, is going to be the same. They've just used a different example. Maybe it's a different kind of fruit or vegetable. Maybe it's a different kind of animal. So if there's a question that you look at and you think, I've never been taught this, don't worry. Nobody else has been taught it either. Instead, have a think about it and think how that can relate to the stuff that you have been taught and maybe some of the practical experiments or other examples from day-to-day -day life that you are familiar with. So there will be questions about unfamiliar contexts, but that's going to be absolutely fine. Just make sure that you think about which of the scientists actually assessing. There's also a section about these extended response questions. These are often known as the six markers. These are the big ones. Now, lots of students, and I suppose myself as well, I quite like the numbers, I don't like writing. Lots of students find these really difficult. And that means sometimes students don't even put anything down. Now, again, you don't have to be aiming for six out of six, but I'm sure for most of these questions, you could get two, three or four marks quite easily. And it doesn't just have to be one massive solid paragraph of text. You can structure it using bullet points, and that's what AQA say. Bullet points are good as long as you are logically structuring your answer. And sometimes as well, you might have a labelled diagram in there as well. So if it's a method where you're explaining a, maybe a particular scientific experiment, you can draw a small diagram, you can label it, rather than just writing everything as this solid block of text. The next bit is about physics equation recall. Um, again, physics is my speciality. I've got over 500 GCSE physics videos. I've also got this uh, completely free AQA GCSE physics revision guide. Uh, where I've got huge amounts of information that you can use as you're revising for your exams. That's a, a free download on my website. Um, but there's something here which I think is really important. Now you will have this year an equation sheet that you can just write these things down from. But a lot of the time students use formula triangles. Now personally I don't like them and you will not gain any marks by just writing down the formula triangle. Instead you've got to write out the formula, formula properly. So the example here they use about acceleration, force and mass. If you need to maybe write down the equation linking those things, you need to say that force equals mass times acceleration. Just putting up a formula triangle isn't good enough and that won't get you the mark. And that then leads on to the next thing, which is about if you've got a calculation, show you're working out because that means even if you made a silly mistake, and again, everybody out there is going to be making silly mistakes when they're under the pressure of an exam, if you made a silly mistake, maybe in your final calculation, maybe just when you were typing into your calculator, it was a bit wrong, you will still get some marks for writing down the correct equation, putting in the right numbers, maybe doing a bit of rearrangement, and that means rather than losing all the marks for that wrong answer, you might still claw some marks back. Show you're working out. I know your teachers will have told you that many, many times. Now, there are a few other things in the guide about rounding numbers, about how to draw graphs. I would recommend that you go to the website. The link is beneath this video. Download it. It doesn't matter which exam board you're taking for GCSE Science, or even if you're doing A-level, it is worth having a flick through, having a look at some of the examples, some of the top tips, and the explanation about why that is. Even though some of it seems really obvious, you know, like read the question, an obvious bit of advice, but they've had to give it because every year hundreds of thousands of students don't read the question and that means even though they might have a very good knowledge of the subject they don't always get all of the marks that they could have gained in that exam. Anyway, hope that helps. Uh, good luck in your exams this year.